When you're playing a team that, that you know offensively is as potent as, as Penn State is, how does that change or affect the way that, that the, your offense has to operate? Um, I guess yeah, I never thought about like you know, since we've been here, you got to match scores if that happens. But uh, you like to think you want to play uh, defense. There's going to be ebbs and flows of games. There's going to be big plays. Uh, we've done a really nice job to me of minimizing turnovers. I've had very few. Uh, we've done a very nice job of having three and outs. So it gives your, you know, if they're having plays, it gives your defense a chance to recover. Uh, but they've got skill. They're going to make plays. They have for years. They're they're lighting it up now. Uh, bottom line, we just got to find a way to whatever that number is. You know, these are games where what's one team averaging like what 55 and 54, and yep. it'll be like a 7-3 shootout or something like that. You <laughs> yeah. know, so, yeah. so you know, and because you got you, you got you got you got great schemes and, and great players and prideful defenses. So he's got to go play and. Adjust. Last year we had to come from behind. Uh, you just got to adjust and play the game. And in this kind of game, I mean, is the offensive line even more important in this kind of game to be able to control play for you guys to keep your defense off the field to some degree? Um, I mean, again, to me, if you're if, if you're saying um, you're controlling line scrimmage, uh, which to me that means your your pass blocking is not breaking down. Right. But when your pass blocks not keep breaking down, that means your receivers are running on time and the ball is coming out of the hand on time and your spacing routes out on time. And when there's loud noise, does that communication slow you down? And not playing faster, no huddle wise, but just does those things happen? Uh, because every time you're doing something, you're you're, you're doing you're you're running passing game in relation to to, to, to time. Uh, in the run game. Uh, when you run the ball, it means a quarterback is disconnecting or he's taking RPOs when they're there. That means the perimeter guys are are uh, are, um, are doing their job. So to me, it takes a whole group uh, to be successful. So it's like if you can't run the ball, it's the line's fault. I, I don't buy that. You know, if you can throw the ball, that means your line's doing well. If you can run the ball, it means your receivers are doing well. So I think it's going to take all 11. When you're on the road, it's going to be tough. It's going to take every guy. It's going to take more than 11. We play with a lot more than 11 guys. It's going to take a lot of guys this Saturday night in State College. Kevin, how, how, prepared is, uh, how prepared is how uh, prepared is Dwayne Haskins Jr. for this kind of environment? Obviously, he played well at TCU a couple of weeks ago and stuff. But what? What I guess has impressed you about him, and where can you, where do you think he can still grow a little? I think every time he plays, I think all, all those players, I think those great players in the NFL are, are always growing. Those guys have, like you know, Peyton Manning always talking, you know, 16, 17, 18, how he wanted to be coached, mm -hmm. and when he's getting, and first of all, he's getting great coaching from Coach Day, and and he, and he did it a year ago, and the way he's playing now goes back to JT's practice habits and things that he saw every day. So, you know, he's a tremendous practice player. He's getting better. I think you saw last year the way he handled a. A big situation last year in a big stage. He was ready to play well in the championship game. He was ready to play well. He was ready to play well every week. And when called upon, he's answered answer the bell. Now, he, he also looks good when the supporting cast looks good. Mm -hmm. So when the offense is clicking and the quarterback looks good and they get all the credit, when the offense is not clicking, it's probably going to be his fault. So as we play as a group, Dwayne's a big part of it, and he'll do a great job. Hey, Evan, you've been a head coach, um, and you've been an assistant at um, a lot of different levels in the sport. So I think you have kind of a general – unique view of maybe what a, what a recruiting is like and you know different types of classes and stuff at different talent levels I was just wondering how soon into a recruiting classes arrival at Ohio State or at any place do you know whether the class as a whole is going to be a hit or not I think we're in a right now society I'm trying to figure this rule I've never heard a rule that I'm on scholarship and I've decided that I'm going to redshirt and then I'm going to transfer so we're paying the rest of the year for you really not to play on our team. I didn't, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, and I'm, I'm about player benefits and the welfare and what's for their best interest. And I like the transfer opportunity, but all of a sudden, like, I'm, I'm through. And, like, who wants to then collect the guy that's not even practicing or working out? And how good is that player going to be? Because the cumulative effect of your habits are going to make you good going forward. So I, I, think, I think players, I think coaches, sometimes we make too many rash decisions. As talented as our classes are, we're a developmental program. And sometimes those linemen need a couple, three years. And you look at the way Demetrius Knox has came on in yeah. a couple, three years. You know, you look, you know, it, sometimes it takes a little time. I think Rashad Berry in taking time is getting to where he's a solid player. So uh, sometimes it takes time. We're, you know, you, you want it as a kid right now. You want it as a family right now. You want it as a fan base. You want it as coaches. But great programs develop players. And to me, the greatest talent is to, is to, to judge as a recruiter is what's this kid's heart, work habits, to persevere and come to work every day. And when you get when you surround a kid in this environment and he does it every day, two and three years down the road, some great things can yeah, happen. Just as a quick follow-up, in 2014 when Ohio State won a national championship, there were five or six huge pieces to that team that were in the 2013 class the year before. And this year, you guys 
the 2017 class was the best class in the history of recruiting from a number standpoint, and you have five or six guys like that year that are playing key roles on this team. What's it like when, when you recruit at a level that that's at that level that that that's that high? Sorry. Um, that's something that you can expect some of those guys to pop and change the culture of your team immediately, though, too, right? Because no it's doubt. happened. No doubt. And how can you tell, and when do you tell that that's happened? To, well, some of those guys, for example, like Dobbins, you can tell when a workout's right, right away just how competitive he was. You can tell the kid's got talent. The one thing that just jumps early, whether it be in fall practice when they show up, like Tariq Smith that got in here early in fall, you can just tell the competitive motor and the kid's got some juice and is he mature enough and confident enough to go play as a young guy. So a lot of those guys have the talent. Some of the talent needs to be developed. What really needs to be harnessed sometimes is the culture of going hard, being consistent, doing it day after day. Some kids are ready for that and some guys aren't. Kevin, Marshall, a couple times this week, Urban's you know, said this is now a pass-first offense because you guys are playing to the personnel. Did you all as a staff believe in the spring or in training camp that this was going to be the case, that Ohio State would be throwing it to the level that they are right now? Uh, you know, not, I don't, we didn't talk about it. We knew Dwayne was capable of some things. Um, I really, I mean, personally, I never thought of us as a, as a run first or now a pass first based on the notes because you take what's there. Now, we went from a guy that was pulling it and running it to now a guy that is maybe distributing the throws. So to me, that's where it's different. The schemes have not changed dramatically. The language has changed minimally. There's been a few little tweaks, but what you're doing is, is trying to, um, what you don't want to do when you're, if, if you're saying we're a quota pass first team, really good teams are physical. And if, as we throw the ball, we got to maintain a physical presence as an offense that we can get, you know, the four minute offense and the, in the red zone and goal line and short yardage offenses and control the line of scrimmage like we were talking earlier about that we need to do. So, um, I, you know, to me, I just want to be a high scoring offense. I never thought it was run and yeah. pass.